Welcome to the Bio Balance HealthCast, episode number 382. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. My practice, BioBalance Health, is centered around making people healthier and preventing diseases as they get older. Not the typical medical practice, which is you have a, an illness or a symptom and your doctor tries to fix that illness or symptom and says, bye, see you later, let you go on about your life. So what we're trying to do is try to make you healthier throughout, throughout your life and look at the diseases that you are most likely to have and try to avoid them. Mm-hmm. So this is typical for my personality because when I was in residency, um, they used to call me radar because I would wake up before something happened, come out of the call room and go, what's going on? And then all of a sudden something would happen. So yeah. I would I would feel it first. I'm, I'm used to preempting things ahead of time and trying to fix things before they happen because I think that's the best way to treat disease. Mm-hmm. So uh, today we're going to talk about those patients, most of our patients, we have a 95% success rate, do great, they feel better, they look better, and they are actually healthier. Right. And in the future, they won't have so many diseases. So our goal is feeling well and actually being healthy. Right. What we're going to talk about today is those patients who do feel well and are healthy, and then they say, hmm, I want more. Yeah. <laughs> so what's more than healthy, feeling young, and not getting diseases in the future. I don't know. There really isn't that. That's the goal. Well, it's kind of hard to evaluate what you don't have. So if I have Mm -hmm. managed to avoid or delay the onset of dementia or Alzheimer's, Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here thinking, well, that's not me. I don't have that. Mm -hmm. So what else can I do? What else can I have? Maybe I need to improve the way I look. Maybe I can get my brain faster or shorter. I play Jeopardy, and and I'm noticing that the answers are not coming the way they once did. So I'm saying, well, well, maybe what's being done here is not enough. So I'll try this or that. So you've forgotten how you felt before. Exactly. Well, you you and I both know that happens all the time, which is why you take photographs and document when Mm -hmm. people come in with presentation. This is what I'm aware of. This is what's bothering me. Can you can you fix that? You fix it. And then they come in and go, well, I never had that. uh, Yeah, I never had that. (laughs) And I have to go. No, look at the symptoms you checked with your own handwriting or your own on your own computer screen. Those are the symptoms you had. Oh, I forgot. But you, but you know, uh, also, a lot of people sit at home and watch television, and advertisers market things uh, with beautiful ads, mm-hmm. that are drugs in particular. Mm-hmm. We don't have a clue what it's for or what it does, but it or makes everybody like look so happy. Uh-huh. And maybe I should try that, too. So I that? want it. I go to maybe a different doctor and say, well, can you give me mm-hmm. this drug? Because I saw this commercial, and these mm-hmm. people were just really right on. <laughs> it's advertising. It's not real. I, I but, understand yeah. that. But a lot of people are susceptible to that because mm-hmm. some of the best minds in the business are in advertising. That's true. That's true. But but people people need to know people need to that know. if they As, don't have... They don't have inquiring minds. their problems anymore. You see it right there at the checkout stand. Inquiring minds want to know why there was a three-headed baby yeah. born in Toledo. Yeah, well, that's not true. But so in any case, <laughs> um, I don't want patients to make this mistake because inevitably the the outcome of I feel great, I'm healthy, all my, my labs look good, right. I'm doing the things I always did 20 years ago, and then they go, I want more, and then... They mess up their treatment. Yeah. They either add something or take something away or 
but there's there are different ways to approach this. I've seen four different personality types in well, my one, history one, of doing this. Your practice is really full of what we would call type A overachievers. Right. Mm -hmm. And these people have been successful in part because of the way their personalities are. Mm -hmm. the, the driven, perfectionistic, take care of all the details. The more I try, the better I am. Yeah. So that doesn't work in infertility, mm -hmm. and that doesn't work in this either. Practice. practice. So, I mean, it, those are two things that that doesn't always work for for a patient. Basically, yes, you have to try to follow the directions of the doctors and nurse practitioners in my office. Mm -hmm. but And you can ask questions, of course. But when we give you answers that are based on science and we give you answers that are based on 15 years of experience of doing this one thing, right. then that should kind of close the door on your worry about what's going on or, or if you could be better. So, so it, and it may, but the point is their personality is structured <laughs> in such a way that some other worry will intrude. And mm -hmm. so they will want to fine tune it. They'll want to like, okay, so we got this covered, <laughs> but what if I do this? I read in a magazine or I saw on TV mm -hmm. or my next door neighbor told me that they do this and that helped them. Right. The perfectionists. So, so let's you know. just call these people the overachievers or perfectionists. Yeah. They want their more. human they body want to yeah. be perfect, even though they haven't treated it well for the last 40 years or they have they haven't fed it properly. And now all of a sudden we've made a big change for them. And then they're like, oh. I, I have to I have to climb the next peak and get something else. Well, yeah. Don't fix it if it isn't broken, because generally they try things that are outside of our sphere of, of control or our advice. And they come back and they go, oh, I don't feel good anymore. I just, oh, I just, that's, you know, they, they just, they think it is what we're doing and it's what they've done mm -hmm. in reality. So when we sort this out, which takes a lot of time, energy, effort, and, and, creative thinking to figure out what they did right. that decreased their, their response to, tr to replacing hormones and supplements and nutrition, then they go, Oh, you know, but that doesn't prevent this personality type. Right. It should. No, it uh, doesn't. It doesn't prevent them from doing it again. Right. So, um, that's that. Okay. So lifters are in this category too. Right. Right. So people who are who are body buffs, lifters who who go in and want to be, you know, they're sixty, but they want to be thirty. Well, I, I can't like Jack do that. Right. You know, ninety years old, he had himself handcuffed to a boat and swam across the bay. Uh, yeah, because well, to prove that he could, and that's part of his shtick. It's part of his shtick, and it's part of his marketing, and he, but he did it. But there are people that continue to set goals for themselves. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, in, in doing therapy with clients. It was not unusual to have a client similar to this that would come in and have habituated to some routine that was becoming destructive because it was an, an obsession mm -hmm. uh, that became a compulsion, mm -hmm. uh, like getting on a Stairmaster. Mm -hmm. I, I had one client who was 60 years old, was a personal trainer, and she had burned out three or four Stairmasters because she used them too much, and, and they finally mm -hmm. broke down. Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone else that's done that. I do. And, and I said to her, Okay, so we need to find something for you to do besides get on a stairmaster. Mm -hmm. Well, but that's what I want to do. That's what I'm focused on. That's what I know how to do. And I said, let's talk about like getting in the bathtub and reading a book. You know, <laughs> as a way to relax. Right. Oh, I I don't read. Well, perhaps you should so try to have, read. They, so they, they don't know what to fill it in with. So we have perfectionists, and then yes. we have control freaks. And I think that probably lifters are a combination of, okay. and what you're talking about is All a right. combination of. People who want to control their environment, control every part of their uh, care themselves. So this looks a little different to me. Right. Perfectionists are trying things to get better and better and better. Control freaks are changing everything we tell them to do every day mm -hmm. and calling us because, and saying, they really... I did this and I don't know about that. And what do you think about this? I heard on television and my sister told me that. And, and they want to control what's happening yet they don't have they they should depend on us for being experts they are trying to control their own care because they can't stand to have us control it no one else can control their or, or their lives in general feel out of control like like right. a, an anorexic girl or mm -hmm. boy boys can be anorexic too although they really are 
uh, outside of a cancer diagnosis than they are. But an anorexic girl will identify one area of her life that she can absolutely and rigidly control, mm -hmm. that nobody can make her consume mm -hmm. more than this amount of calories, because in part, she feels like the rest of her life is not under her control. Mm -hmm. And so for some people, can, that what they learn in order to survive is you have to control things, mm -hmm. and they become very controlling. Well, and but many if you carry that to an extreme, then you have somebody that so hyper-focuses on one aspect and controlling that mm -hmm. one aspect aspect because they feel like they're not in control anywhere else in the world. They're, they're trying to control their hormones. And part of this is that many women who are menopausal or premenopausal that have hormone deficiencies are told it's all in their head. They're, they're lied to. They're, they're brushed off. They're, they're, they aren't <clears throat> believed. Right. So by the time they get to me, they don't really trust doctors or any other type of medical authority figure. So right. they're testing all the time. Test, and so well, that brings so, you to the third person. No, but type. the first, the worst thing that happens here is that they change things when they're at home with how all the things that they're supposed to be doing. Right. They change them, and they change them often, and they then come back and say the pellets aren't working, right. the hormones aren't working. Well, you are great for a year, or you are great for a month, right. and now they're not working. And you say, well, what's changed? And they say, oh, nothing. Right. And you continue to talk to them, and right. they say, well, I did go on a new diet. Right. Or I did find a new supplement that I started taking. Uh, or I stopped doing I saw this. Thing I stopped you. taking progesterone. Yeah. Or I stopped taking this. Or I stopped taking the supplement. I decided you gave I didn't me. need that. I decided that much. I didn't want to buy those. Yeah. But those are part. We use supplements like we use medication. Right. Supplements are instead of a medication because we find that they have fewer side effects. So that's like changing everything that the doctor told you to do, and and many times they're under the. The, a false assumption of what a hormone does. So, mm -hmm. so they're u they're using the wrong information to make the wrong decision. In any case, it really messes them up, and it takes right. us months and maybe a year to get them back. Right. Just because. In part, it takes you a while to figure out what they've done. Right. And they don't. They're not forthcoming all the time. And if right. they are, I'm like, stop doing that. And then it's hard for them to stop. Yeah. So now we get to we get to our um, our th third kind of uh, the, do the doctor shop personality which is like my most unhappy kind of personality <laughs> I mean I, I dislike this the most mm -hmm. because they go to other doctors and they don't tell them everything right and then they complain about something and the other doctor generally goes well what did you do well I took hormones well then stop taking them because that's your problem because they didn't tell them everything and they didn't tell them when this started when it stopped that kind of thing so they they're pitting doctors against each other so i remember a number of years ago when i went to my dentist and my dentist that i've been going to for years mm -hmm. hands me this big form and he says i need you to fill this out it's about insurance changes or what have you mm -hmm. but he was asking me all these questions and i started reading the questions and partly because i know what i do for a living mm -hmm. i started laughing at him i said you want to find out if i have aids Right. And he's like, yeah, because it's dangerous to them. To me. <laughs> and, and I said, that makes sense to me, but ask. I would have preferred that you just ask me. I mean, th these mm -hmm. questions are invasive mm -hmm. uh, and detailed. And I'm not going to tell you the truth on a lot of these things. If you had it. Well, uh, no, I just, I'm oppositional. And so mm -hmm. when people start to that. try to manipulate me, then I want to play mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. So... What I, and the reason I'm telling that story is I think people categorize doctors. So if I go to my dentist, I think there's certain legitimate pieces of information my dentist mm -hmm. should ask for and should get. Mm -hmm. But other things, like what, are, what medicines am I taking for my migraines, I don't see the relevance of that to him cleaning my teeth. It might. But I, you don't I, see I accept it. that it might, and I don't know. That's, that's the area where I'm ignorant. But I think a lot of people are like me. Mm -hmm. And so they may come to you as, as a gynecologist and say, well, I'm talking to you about these issues regarding my health, and I'm not going to talk to you about other things because I just don't see the relevance mm -hmm. of it. So they edit the information that they provide. Mm -hmm. You're trying to find out, especially not as a gynecologist, but but as a uh, uh, an anti-aging specialist mm -hmm. who's looking at all of the domains that can be impacted as we age. And you're wanting to know, well, what it's your health history mm -hmm. and what things do you take, what supplements, what mm -hmm. medicines, what have you, because all that factors into your diagnosis and your treatment. You know, here's our, because you make sequenced 
treatment plans. First, you got to lose 15 pounds. We, mm -hmm. the second, we got to, well, at your age, we need to do some resistance that. exercise. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, there are things mm -hmm. that we want to do. And when we get you where we want you to be, then we want to keep you there. Right. And if you're not getting that information, if I'm editing it or if I'm playing with it when you don't, when you're not around, like you say, well, I want you, you to take mean you as a patient. Yes. Me as a patient. Okay. So you say, I want you to take all these supplements. No, and I go home and, each, I, and I, but we tell each person what the supplements are, but they don't right. remember what we've said. Exactly. So they say, I don't know why I'm taking these. That's why we right. started like writing out why everybody takes everything. Anyway, mm -hmm. so we're trying to respond to the fact that not everybody can remember everything. But what I'm talking about is the manipulative, a patient who I, I think they don't really want to be better. They mm. get better and then they go, oh, I'm going to go to this other doctor and find out about this. Or I'm going to have, but, but basically they don't tell anybody the whole story about what's really happening when it started. They don't remember that kind of thing. So all the doctor can do is think that I'm nuts and that I'm giving them some weird thing. And oftentimes it's that it's may not even be a real symptom but little by little they whittle away at my treatment they whittle away at the other doctor's treatment and they choose what they want to do and what they don't that doesn't really work for medicine you've got you've got to do it as you're told to do it or one thing will be out of balance and we won't get the outcome yes. that we need which is health and feeling good so those patients basically i have to actually say you have to choose me or them right I mean, you're either going to follow what I say because I know that this is going to help you, mm -hmm. or I mean, if I need a if I need a referral, I'll give them one. But but if I don't, these these are things that you're you're doing yourself. You need to stop doing those things and follow what we're doing. So patients that are non-compliant, you, you put them on a prescription and they say, "Well, that yeah. made my head hurt." Or they so call another I doctor cut it that in made half. my head hurt. Yeah. or I quit taking it. Right, or I quit taking it. You know, I skipped it for the, for a week. There's a reason you go to a doctor, and that's because they have a heck of a lot of training. We have gone through a lot of training and and residencies and other kind of uh, of torture that we've gone through just to be a doctor and have that knowledge. Most of the time. We have good ideas and we have good recommendations, but we can't, if you give us BS in, we have BS out. You have to give us all the information and you have to follow what we say if you want the outcome that we're looking for. Outsiders just don't necessarily know anything about what you do. I, I remember talking to a lot of elementary teachers, young ones, mm -hmm. that would come in and say, uh, I, I don't know what to say. I get flustered when parents come in and I'm telling them about the behaviors of their children or the mm -hmm. learning issues of their children. And they look at me sardonically and say, well, do you have any children? <laughs> and, and I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. And I say, you look them right in the eye and you say, yes, I have 27 nine-year-olds <laughs> this year. I had 29 <laughs> nine-year-olds last year. And over the last 10 years, I've had 300 nine-year-olds. So I know more about nine-year-olds than you do. It's <laughs> good. And they would and say, and they would say can you say that? I said, I can, but I don't know if you can. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually, but that, but you know, really doctors don't have time to, we, we have, our, we have our credentials listed. So, right. Know, well, so do them. teachers. I know. Yeah. You shouldn't have to be challenged in that way, but I guess most of the time when patient, patients are coming in, I mean, we answer their questions, but it's, it's not a adversarial. Right kind of a situation right yeah that's not helpful for getting better yes and neither is it for taking care of children well but that brings us to the last type the last type is the person that's over introspective and over concerned about sort of micromanaging aspects of their body mm -hmm. and they and they're so sensitive it's like they're constantly saying what's that what's that is this going on do i have this right they take so their blood pressure 10 times a day they yeah. take their pulse they measure their bodies i mean we've i've i've had patients who've done all of those things right. that they're they're over concerned about what's going on and hormones are a <laughs> my my world is hormones and preventive medicine it's a long term deal right. it's not something that i'm going to give you a pellet today and tomorrow something's going to happen it doesn't work like that right. it's usually four weeks down the line you start feeling the full effects and then they slowly wear off and it's it's not a an ICU and most people, sh it's not healthy to live like you're in an ICU where you're taking your blood pressure and you're taking your pulse and measuring yourself. That's, that is a sign of insecurity, but also a sign of anxiety. And oftentimes anxiety appears that way. Yes. So anxiety usually breeds um, distrust 
Mm -hmm. in what's going on and any little thing, which could be from anything in life, is then associated with my hormones. My hormones did this. My blood pressure went up, so my hormones did that. No, you're 70. Your blood pressure went up. I mean, it's not your it's not your hormones just because you're taking them. And they can ascribe the reactions to the hormones, but they're not accurate. I mean, they don't know what they're ascribing. They, the, the difference is that they can't play with the dosage on the hormones. Right. You put the hormones in their body Which and they walk away. One of the away. advantages of pellets yeah. is that I don't have to worry about whether patients are are taking the hormones or not. I used to when I did a long did time ago and when I did creams and, and gels. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, people would use a whole month's worth yes. in one day, which yeah. was disastrous. Right. Or they would not use it at all and come in and say, I'm still having painful intercourse. Well, did you use the medicine? Did you use the cream I told you to put in your vagina? No. No. Well, of course you still no, have it that. It was inconvenient. I wasn't home. You yeah. still you still have you still have that symptom because you didn't do the treatment I told right. you to do. So, I mean, you ha you have to kind of think about yourself and how you're handling the information given to you. So, if you have one of these personality types, getting healthy and staying healthy is going to be a challenge be for you because you're going to keep messing with it. But if you don't have one of these personality types, it's not going to be nearly as complex. <laughs> Thank you en for listening. Enjoy the success that you have. Yes. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.